My name is Rhys and I come from the UK. I've been given unprecedented access to go deep into China's Shanxi province, seeing people, places and businesses that are usually off limits. I hope you'll join me to see and understand something new. I was here at the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic, so it's really interesting to see the evolution of the COVID testing technology here and how all of these systems have been devised to make dealing with the pandemic situation easier for the doctors, easier for people, and overall just convenient and manageable. We also noticed the cabin and were even invited inside by the doctor. When I went in there, as I said, it was very, very cool inside, uh, definitely compared to the outside. And it really struck me as being very, very clean, very organized, and not a place I would mind working at all in this heat. I came to understand that this cabin is made from aerogel produced by Huayang New Material Group. And I'm really looking forward to going to the factory over in Yangchun soon to take a further look at how these materials are made and how they can be used. We've now arrived in Yangchun at the office of Huayang New Materials Science and Technology Group. Here, we're going to be able to do some experiments to help us further understand the unique properties of aerogel. And I have some in this little vessel here is quite remarkable. You can see the way it behaves when I tip it around is quite bizarre. And what you can't tell is it's incredibly light. In fact, it's the lightest solid in the world. Only 10 grams of this material would be enough to cover an entire football pitch. It is extremely impressive. There's some more of this aerogel here, and it has another quite unique property. If I start this uh, torch, which is over a thousand degrees, you can see it becomes orange with the heat. However, with my other hand, I can even touch the back and pat the back all I would like. And it's not even warm. But not only that, in this experiment here, under here we've got air and above water with a thin layer of aerogel in between. Now, the water is not flowing down because as we know, aerogel is waterproof, but you'll notice when I pump air into the bottom compartment, it bubbles to the surface. So aerogel is waterproof, but it is also breathable. It does allow air to pass through it. So that's two more properties of aerogel. On top of being a thermal insulator, it's waterproof and breathable. I found that a really, really strange experience when I was doing that. But that one as well really got my mind working, trying to think how we could use these unique properties of aerogel to make products better or make construction better. Where could it help us? So I'm here at the factory now where they make the cabins, both for COVID testing and for living in, out of these new materials. The cabin behind me was in fact built this afternoon and what surprised me most when I was watching it was just the speed with which it was built. It took maybe the best part of three hours to put the whole thing together, which I thought was really quite quick. And as the aerogel is so light, that's one of its four really key properties. As it's so light, it only took two people to move each panel into position saving a lot of effort and labor time. But the aerogel is not the only new material utilized in these cabins. The floor is made of graphene, primarily, of course, for its strength. It's extremely thin, but many times stronger than steel. It also offers some advantages in regulating the environment within the cabin. And the last new material used here is the photovoltaic cell or solar panel on the roof. And that's what makes these zero energy cabins. 
That's of course good for the environment, but it also means these cabins can be put pretty much anywhere, even assembled very easily on site in a hard to reach place and function on their own. I think there could be uh, quite a lot of interest in this in, the, in Europe based on my understanding of it. We've just taken part in building a cabin and now I'm really excited to sort of experience what it might be like to live in one of these cabins. So I'm really looking forward to trying this out. It could be, I think, the life of the future. Obviously, making a cup of coffee itself is not too remarkable. It's not particularly interesting. But in the zero energy cabin, it may well be. So, in the zero energy cabin, the electricity for this uh, coffee grinder is going to be coming from the solar panel, which is just over there outside, meaning no energy will be consumed from the national grid or traditional sources when I make this. We saw yesterday Aerogel's an excellent insulator. It's really cool in here. It's quite hot and sunny outside, but right on the side of a hill. But in here, lovely and cool. So I think the coffee is ready now. This might be the first zero energy cup of coffee I have ever made. I dare say it'll taste just as good. I really, really like the idea. The key highlight of this cabin, of course, is the way that it can reduce our impact on the environment. These two projects, what they have in common is that they utilize the unique properties of these new materials. Both of them, the COVID testing station and this uh, cabin, are very, very cool. So the further opportunities for applying aerogel, both in solving long-term problems like climate change and in finding solutions to quick, sudden, suddenly arising problems like the coronavirus pandemic, I think are really endless. And I think there's great potential for these solutions and these innovations to be rolled out more widely, not only in China, but also around the world.